Hello, I'm Cody Whipple with the Pennsylvania Fish and Boat Commission. Today we're in Union County, Pennsylvania on a stream that's locally known as Bull Run. On a map, you'll see it as Limestone Run. Now, this is a tributary to the west branch of the Susquehanna River. Remember, all of the water that's in the Susquehanna watershed is eventually going to end up in the Chesapeake Bay. So anything you do upstream is always going to affect what's occurring downstream. Today, we're with a very special guest, Shannon Stom. Shannon works for the Union County Conservation District, and in this video, she's gonna talk about some of the factors that they look for when you're talking about non-point source pollution. Good afternoon. This is Shannon Stom with Union County Conservation District. Welcome to Bull Run. Today, we're going to be looking at physical, biological, and chemical aspects of the stream. So when we go out to assess the stream, we are looking for, at the physical habitats, we're looking at the stream banks. We're looking at the landscape in along the stream corridor. We're gonna be looking at the stream bottom and talking a little bit about that. Uh, this has been listed as an impaired stream by DEP biologists. They will go out and assess streams um, looking at some of those same components, they'll do a biological assessment and the biological assessment is collecting, collecting macroinvertebrates because macroinvertebrates will tell us about the health of the stream. So they've already done that here for us at this site on Bull Run. And you can see some of the factors that we're gonna be looking at that affect those macroinvertebrates. So the first thing we're gonna be talking about are the stream banks. So we're gonna be talking about the source of the sediment to the stream. Over here, we have a vertical stream bank. It's eroding. Uh, the grass roots are not deep enough to hold the stream bank. So when we get high flows, it just erodes the stream bank. It makes the streams wider as that sediment sloughs off and comes down into the stream and the siltation covers the stream bottom. So Shannon, what we're looking at here, as this sediment fills in, is this actually the normal depth that you would have within this stream? No, looking upstream, you can actually get more of a visual of the profile of the stream and how channelized we are. We are kind of down in a U-shaped stream bank here. And you can see we have some water depth over here, but it's only about two inches in the center because we're filled up with sediment in there so you typically would have a a thal wag running through here and we really do not have that do you mention a thought thal wag what is a thal wag so that's your deepest your center point of the stream where you have the deeper flows um, when we talk about streams and stream habitat there's different habitats within a stream so just like there are different habitats on land we have different habitats within the stream so we'll have riffles, we'll have pools, we'll have runs, we'll have glides, you know, we'll have pocket water areas. So there's, there's different things that we're looking at that create the habitat for those macroinvertebrates. And we are not seeing that at this site. So there's, there's definite reasons why this stream is impaired. So what are some things that you could do to protect this stream bank? So I see we have this stump behind you. Is that a good idea to leave stuff like that on the stream bank? Yeah, if you if you have to cut a stream, or I'm sorry, if you have to cut a tree, we recommend that you, we encourage you to leave the roots in place. You can see how the roots are armoring our stream bank. Here, you can, you can see where this is holding back sediment from leaving. Even though it's dead, it is still hanging on, still providing that root structure that what we like to call the rebar. Um, that helps hold our stream banks back. And they ultimately also, when the water levels are up, this is an over-widened section of stream as well due to the erosion and the canyon-like situation that we sit in. So it just keeps getting wider and shallower. Um, so typically when the water levels are up and in a normal situation, in a good habitat situation, you would have water that would be filling these voids back underneath here, and this would be fantastic fish habitat. 
when you have siltation like what we're experiencing here, what kind of implications does that have for the water temperature? So the siltation creates, that you can see here, creates um, basically, this. it absorbs all of the sun and all of the temperature. It absorbs all of the sunlight and increases the temperature in the system. Uh, when you have turbidity like this and that cloudy water, it typically impacts the temperature by making it rise. The higher the temperature, the lower the dissolved oxygen for the macroinvertebrates and the fish that live in the stream. They have to have some kind of a churning motion or aeration um, that gets the dissolved oxygen into the water. And in these overwidened situations, you already are limiting your riffles. And when you do that, you're not getting that oxygenation. So we're already at a lower dissolved oxygen level here. And then when you have the sediment, it just rises the temperature even more. Thank you. So I see we do have some vegetation right here behind you. How does that vegetation help protect the stream bank and the stream, the water quality of the stream? Riparian buffers, as they're known, uh, provide a lot of, a lot of benefit. So in this case, we're looking at the root structure on the stream banks. Um, if you look at that, you can see how the tree roots are holding everything in place there versus what we had downstream where we had no tree roots. The grass roots are shallow compared to the tree roots. They're not as heavily armored like the tree roots. So obviously they provide the stability for us, but they also provide the shade, which helps cool the stream. They also provide leaf drop to the stream. The leaf drop is incredibly important as, especially as we talk about mitigation efforts, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but they are incredibly important to the macroinvertebrate life that's in the stream. If they don't have food, then they are absent, and if they are absent, fish are absent. Awesome. Thank you very much, Shannon.